So I've got uh, this little thing in the mail here and I know what it is because the guy who sent it uh, told me it was coming. It took a lot longer to get here than either of us expected to because you know the postal system is just like that these days. But it's something that he's got on a Kickstarter right now and wanted me to show off and it looked interesting enough that even if it wasn't a Kickstarter I'd want to look at it. So let's get in here and see what we have comes fairly well packaged, uh, both bubble pack and the cardboard box. This is called a tick station. It is a power supply board. Um, and initially, judging by that, it looks sort of like a breadboard power supply. Like these various ones here. And it can function like that, but it can do several more interesting things. So in the box, we have a USB-C uh, power supply, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a cute little screwdriver, and the board. Oh, actually, two boards. Let's just separate these for a second. So there is the main board, which is actually a double layer board, or, well, two boards sandwiched together. And then there's this little breakout board that just plugs into the pin headers. So that's kind of neat and gives you screw terminals. One sheet of paper comes with it, uh, explaining a few things, giving some technical details and whatnot. And these are all also on the website. Um, we'll take a look at that a bit later. But basically, in its you know, standard configuration, you use the USB-C input, uh, which will be USB power delivery, which I put it claims that it can uh, do power delivery up to uh, 20 volts for the input or with the ion battery or with acid battery and provides various different outputs, which seems interesting enough. It could be very handy. I mean, power supplies are always handy in the, uh, in ye old tinkering shop. So the voltage is available on this thing. It's got a five volts in ground and a 3.3 volts in ground that will just go straight onto the rails of the breadboard, which is handy and fairly standard. But then you've also got uh, 12 volts, uh, plus and minus 12 volts. So good for op amp, powering op amp stuff and whatnot. Then you have an adjustable power supply and then another one down here. But when you put them onto a breadboard, then you've got the five volts bus up there, the 3.3 volt bus down there. You have 12 volts in here and your adjustables there, which you can jump out to wherever you want. That's kind of neat. And it takes up, you know, it takes up a certain amount at the end of the breadboard, but on a larger breadboard, it's not, uh, not a huge amount. And it goes very securely onto there. It's a little tight to get the pins on, but they did go with just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of paying attention. There is a lot of pins to try and get lined up. But I think just for my testing and playing, I'm going to use this module here. Uh, what do they call that? The output extension and just see what happens. So the end here, we've got a USB-C, USB, uh, I can't remember, mini or micro. You know the one anyway. Uh, we have screw terminals for a battery input as different ways of powering the thing. And then we have a power on off switch there. So this plugs into the USB-C input and we got a whole bunch of LEDs. When you turn it off, see that minus 12 volts takes a while to fade out, which means there's some capacitive smoothing going on on the output of this thing. A fair bit of capacitor smoothing. So just with no load on it's drawing about, what is that, nine or 10 milliamps, something like that. Oh, and it's also going into power delivery mode and it's uh, bumped up to the full nine volts that the thing can supply. Cool. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't have a USB-C power supply that can do the full 20 volts, but uh, that's, that's a good place to start anyway. So let's see what these output voltages look like. Let's start, I guess, there's several grounds. Now let's start at the top with the five volts, 5.0 bang on, and a ground, plus 3.3, 3.26, that's pretty close. Minus 12, 09, okay, and, and there's the plus 12, 
And then we have an adjustable output, which is currently sitting at 19 volts. So there is a voltage adjustment right here. Let's see what happens if we... Okay, so it, it goes up to... Hang on here. Since I'm doing this one-handed, I'm going to use the screwdriver that's got the little spinny thing on the back here. Crank this right to the max and see what it'll do. Looks like 27 and a half volts. Okay. And then spin it down. 10 turn pot on there. That's a nice touch. 2018. I'm assuming it'll go all the way down to almost nothing. 3.6. Two point seven, one point seven, one and a half, one point three. That's pretty nice. Fully adjustable. Looks like about one point two and a half or thereabouts. One point two five is where it bottoms out. That's pretty cool. Um, there is also a little adjustment pot here for the plus twelve volts which is that one right there. It's bang on right now. Let's see if we can make it not bang on. Yeah, there we go. So technically you have a second adjustable voltage if you need it, if you need a bunch of different arbitrary voltages. All right, so that is pretty slick and it's obviously using a bunch of switching power supplies on here. Pretty, uh, pretty clear that you can see them here. There's a little switch mode power supply chip there and another one there. Inductor capacitor for this one, inductor capacitor. If you look in the side, you can see more inductors in there. So it's, I'm guessing, without taking it apart, which I don't think I can do because the two boards are stacked and soldered together with these little pins here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And to take that apart would be a bit of a pain, I think. But it's fairly obvious what's going on inside this thing. Neat little board. So the website has a couple of video demonstrations of the product and basically all the same stuff that was on that paperwork, but it's just a little bit easier to read. So you can have up to 24 volts input or you can run it off 5 volts or with the ion battery. And I assume that five volts could come from a high current power supply as well, if you needed it to. Um, there's the multiple outputs. Yeah, two of them are adjustable. It can supply loads up to 1.5 amps. There's that variable output again, up to 25 volts, which is pretty much what we saw. Breadboard compatible, yeah. Different LED for out each output, sure. Oh, okay, so it's saying that the top and bottom boards, those connectors that I thought were just soldered through pieces of uh, copper tubing or brass tubing are actually two millimeter banana plugs. We'll have to go back and take a look at that. That'll let us look a little bit closer at the circuits. Okay, so here is that same chart that we saw in the piece of paper that came with it. It's just showing the with the different input uh, sources what you can expect to get as uh, voltage and current outputs. That's kind of neat. Looks like he's done a fair bit of testing on this thing. That's kind of cool. And yeah, there's what's in the in the box. We saw that already. Oh yeah, uh, so here's something that I meant to talk about too. This is a Kickstarter, so caveat on tour surrounding the whole Kickstarter thing. However, it's already oversubscribed on Kickstarter and this was published as an all or nothing Kickstarter. So since he has over it with as i record this three days to go hopefully by the time you see it there will still be a day left a day or two left again he wanted to get this to me before the kickstarter ended but the post office conspired against us so here it is i'm just throwing this together quickly just so that you can see what's going on but he does have a hundred of them already built so he is actually manufacturing them and he does have the capability there's his proof of that I'm not going to go too much deeper into the various Kickstarter stuff because honestly, I don't know a lot about Kickstarter stuff, but uh, 
if you uh, want to investigate it uh, further, if the Kickstarter is still alive by the time you see this, then feel free. One thing I'm not seeing is is the price that he's actually selling it for after the Kickstarter. I assume there will be just a straight up sale price. I don't know for sure. You'll have to contact the guy to find out. So let's take a look at that. Oh, look at that. They do separate. Oh, that's cool. They're tight, but they do separate. Okay. So the top board we saw with its two power supplies. And there's the bottom board with the various buck and boost converters. So I'll just quickly go through the chips that are on here. This one is a USB-C power delivery type chip. Um, it's the one that communicates over the USB-C and negotiates the incoming voltage there. We have a step-down converter chip over there. We have a pair of buck boost converter chips over here. And then, as you would expect, surrounding all these bucking and boosting uh, guys, a bunch of inductors, a bunch of capacitors, a bunch of diodes, no surprise there. And then on the top board, these two are both, again, just buck converter chips with their inductor capacitor uh, associated with them. And these banana plugs are both used to physically connect the things together as you'd expect but they're also passing the voltages between the top board and the bottom board allow me to demonstrate that is a very solid mounting system i am impressed with that so this one up here is marked as ground let me just get my hands out of my own way here this one over here is nine volts which is the raw voltage coming from the usb this one's minus 12. That one's plus 12 coming up from the bottom board. And that is two and a half volts right now. So that's the adjustable. And then these two here are the five volts and nine volts. There's the, not, no, five volts there, not nine volts. This is 3.3 .3 volts down here. So that's generated up here, presumably from that nine volts that's coming up from there. I haven't traced everything else out because I'm not fully reverse engineering this thing. Uh, that's not what we're doing here today. But one thing that I did notice, unfortunately, is it doesn't fit perfectly onto every single breadboard. Uh, some of them have larger and smaller uh, buffers at the ends and the positioning isn't exactly standard. So this particular breadboard uh, all the, the uh, internal pins will fit properly, but because of how they've spaced the rails, that won't fit quite properly on that one. This one's got a little nubbin on the end, which crashes onto there. Um, this board, on the other hand, does work well, and that's where I had it plugged into in the beginning. If you do decide to get one of these, you'll probably want to uh, just make sure that uh, you've got an assortment of breadboards around or standardize on one. Um, that's that's really the only disappointment that I have with this thing. Other than that, it seems to be a pretty solid little piece of kit. And uh, I'm interested to see when he starts selling these after the uh, Kickstarter uh, orders are fulfilled. I'm interested to see just how much he sells this thing for. I will, of course, put all the links down in the description down below. Um, as always with Kickstarters, uh, do your research, cover your uh, cover yourself. Don't uh, pledge any money that you uh, can't afford to donate. Uh, but this guy seems like a reasonable guy. Uh, he's got links through his websites to other stuff that he's done in the past, which isn't currently available for sale. But he seems like an up and up guy, but that's just. Yeah, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, do your own thing. Anyways, um, I thought that would be interesting to take a look at when he offered it to me. So there you go. That is the Tick Station Mini Power Station Board. Uh, questions and comments down below as usual. Links, of course, will always be down there. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.